Okay, for 9b, uh, we have a little bit less work on this one than the previous one because we don't have to worry about doing complete the square on this. So on this one, we just have to still get it into the proper form. We always have to have a 1 after the equal sign. So for this one, we're just going to divide everything by 16. And we get y squared over 1 minus x squared over 16 equals 1 over there. So now it's in the proper form. Uh, what we can tell about this is it's going to be, again, a hyperbola because you got the minus sign there. And you can also tell by what the question is asking. If it's asking you for asymptotes and transverse conjugate, that tells you you're looking at a hyperbola. Uh, what we tell about this hyperbola is since there's no uh, parentheses around any of those, we know that the center is going to be 0, 0. What we also know about this hyperbola is since the y squared comes first, this is a hyperbola that opens up and down. Okay, so if y squared comes first, it opens up and down. If x squared comes first, it opens up sideways. Now, what about the, the, a, the a and the b value? For hyperbolas, it's not the larger number is always a. That's for ellipses. For hyperbola, whatever physically comes first in front of the minus sign, whatever number is in front, that's automatically a squared. So a squared on this problem equals 1 and b squared equals 16. The value for c, the formula for it, you have a squared and b squared. Whatever goes in between them is always the opposite sign of what's in the original formula. There's a minus sign there, which means there's got to be a plus inside here. So we find our c by doing square root of a squared plus b squared. 1 squared plus 16 squared. It's going to give you the square root of uh, for each of these, so 1 squared plus, uh, actually I didn't finish these and get a and b, so actually a is 1 and b is 4, but if you put the squared versions in each of these, you would have 1 squared plus 4 squared and you get square root of 17. So square root of 17 uh, is about a little bit more than 4, so 4.1. Now we have a, b, and c. We're ready to uh, draw the graph. So the graph I'm going to actually do that up here so we have some more space. First thing I want to do is the center. The center this time is 0, 0. The A has to go in the direction that it opens up. So even though A is smaller, we got to go up and down with A because uh, since Y squared came first in the formula, we know it opens up and down. So we're going to go up one and then we're going to go down one. That's the a value. Now these dots that I'm putting here, those are going to be your vertices. So whenever you go up with a and down with a, automatically you divert, that's your vertices. So vertices will be 0, plus or minus 1. So 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and that's your vertices. Next, we're going to do the, the b. Now the b is 4. We go 4 to the right and we go 4 to the left. Now what that does is that will create dimensions for your box. The box, we have it going across the top here and we're, we have the sides right there at 4, negative 4. So that's going to be your completed box. We want to do these diagonals. You're connecting the diagonals. That's actually why you create the box in the first place. So that way you can tell what these diagonals are going to be. The diagonals are going to be these asymptotes, and that's going to define the shape of the graph. Now when you draw the graph itself, the graph is going to follow this one. It'll come down, it'll hit that point, and go back up here. And the other one, it'll do the same thing and look something like that. So that's what the graph itself is going to look like. For your foci, uh, 4.1 we have for that. So from here, we're going to go up. 2, 3, 4. 4.1 is right above there. And here we go 1, 2, 3, 4. Ends up down here. Again, remember the foci has to always be inside of the curve. So wherever the curve is opening to, that's where that's going to be included inside there. So now that we have this, we can complete what the uh, coordinates of the foci. How we did that is we took 0, we went up 4.1, and we did down 4.1. And so that's 0 plus or minus, instead of 4.1, we'll use the exact value, square root of 17. So 0 plus square root of 17, 0 negative square root of 17. 
Now we're going to do the asymptotes. So asymptotes are the point slope form, or the uh, uh, point slope, yeah, point slope we're doing on this one. So we have a y minus zero uh, is going to equal. Now the formula, if it opens up and down, the, the slope value you're going to put there is going to be a over b. So in this case, it's going to be a over b is one fourth. Then you do x minus. Uh, the y coordinate of your center, which is zero. You could leave your answer like that, or if you wanted to simplify it to y equals one quarter x, that's okay uh, as well. And so this has got to have a plus or minus in front of it, by the way. So plus or minus, we need transverse axis is two times a, two times one, which is two. Your conjugate is two times b, two times four, which is eight. Eccentricity is c over a, so Square root of 17 is going to be your, your, your E, which again, we did that already, 4.1. Typically, the larger the value for C is, the wider it becomes. This is really a wide one that we have with that. So this answers all the information. So again, with your asymptote here, uh, I don't believe I did that on the previous problem on 9A. So on 9A, you actually need to have plus or minus here on that. So make a note of that one on your answer for 9A for the asymptotes. Uh, I'm going to you need to have a plus or minus in front of that. I'm not going to film that whole problem over again because it's really long. So just remember to put plus or minus next to that answer for uh, 9A.